If you're a part of any garden club or garden society, oftentimes this time of year, midsummer, you'll start seeing that the conversation switches from, wow, my plants are doing so well this year, to, oh no, what's happening to my plants? A lot of times, midsummer, we start seeing different symptoms and signs that tell us something is happening irregular with our plants. That can include spotting, curling, cupping, uh, irregular growth on your plants, and even, for lack of a better word, oozing. Now, if you see any of these signs and symptoms, it might mean that you have a disease on your plant. It must be a disease. But what's a disease? A disease is a condition of a plant that impairs normal function and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms. Well, you have your signs and your symptoms right there on the plant. In fact, that's probably what led you to think there's something wrong with your plant in the first place. But what is the disease? Well, the study of plant disease is also known as plant pathology. Fortunately, here at OSU, we have the Plant Disease and Insect Diagnostic Lab, where plant pathologists can extract samples, look under microscopes, and use tests to determine if any pathogens are present. A pathogen? But what's a pathogen? A pathogen is a bacterium, virus, or other microorganism that can cause diseases. If a pathogen is found to be present, then we can better know how to handle the situation. When a pathogen is found, this is known to be a biotic disease. The word biotic comes from the Greek word bios, meaning life. Biotic diseases are those that arise due to living organisms such as bacteria, fungi, viruses, and nematodes. Sometimes you might think you have a disease, but no pathogens are found. This is known as abiotic, or absence of living organisms. These are typically a result of environmental conditions such as soil, water, light, nutrients, chemical exposure, or even temperature that leads to the stress of the plant. Abiotic diseases are also known as physiological disorders. While the most assured way to identify the disease is to send a sample to the lab, there are often clues in the landscape that will tell you whether the disease is biotic or abiotic. Clue number one you are seeing the same symptoms on different types of plants. For instance, nutrient deficiencies will often cause the leaves of plants to turn yellow or purple. If you saw this happening on the foliage in all your various vegetable plants, this would be a clue that it is environmental, not a pathogen. Alternatively, biotic diseases that are caused by pathogens are often host-specific and will only target their preferred host. Keep in mind, however, they may like several plants from within the same plant family. For example, you might see the same problem on your squash as you do on your melons because they again are in the same plant family. But if you also see that on your corn, then it's likely an abiotic problem. This is why crop rotation is important, but that's another segment for another day. Clue number two. Abiotic diseases or disorders can often be found in patterns or are uniform in their appearance in the landscape. This pattern or uniform appearance is due to the area of exposure to the environmental factor that's causing the symptoms. For example, frost damage on Bermuda grass can create a unique tiger stripe pattern in the fall when the frost begins to settle on the lawn. Clue number three, abiotic diseases are not contagious from one plant to another. In some cases, you might find that the plant will grow out of it or return to normal once the adverse environmental conditions have been removed or corrected. Clue number four, think about the weather. In fact, most biotic diseases are caused by fungi. And generally speaking, they like moist conditions and moderate temperatures. Now, if we've been experiencing hot, dry conditions, aka summer in Oklahoma, then the odds are that you're seeing more abiotic symptoms than biotic symptoms. And in fact, of all the labs across the country and the samples that are submitted, anywhere from 50% to 85% of those samples come back as abiotic problems, not an identified pathogen. Now, to make matters more confusing, sometimes abiotic symptoms can lead to biotic diseases, especially if you have abiotic symptoms that are affecting the leaves, the stems, or the roots. 
depending on the severity, it can deteriorate the overall health of the plant, making it more of an opportunity for those pathogens to set in. This is known as a secondary biotic disease. While there are a plethora of problems that can plague your garden this time of year, understanding whether you might have an abiotic or a biotic disease on your plants can help you determine your next step. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.